it's beer kit review time and it's another one from the Munson's range after the great success of uh, Kutch, um, the uh, the red ale beer that I really love. I've got another batch on the go at the moment. I'm drinking way too soon before it's even properly carbonated just because it tastes so damn good. Um, we're about a week away from Christmas and I've got a Christmas beer kit to brew which I understand is probably not going to be ready in time for Christmas now, probably just after, so the review is probably going to come up a little late by which time I'm not sure if this kit would still be in the shops, probably will be, um, but it will give a kind of an overview of the kit. Um, it's going to be one from the handcrafted range, get this to focus in, and it is the winter warmer. Um, I'm probably not going to film me pouring the kit in because it is quite, I say a basic kit, um, I've been quite impressed with the, the quality of the Muntins kits of late, they, they really seem to have kind of upped their game. Obviously the, the Kutch, I will admit, I think um, copes a little bit better with the kind of the beer kit taste that you do, do get. If you're kind of if you're familiar with beer kits, you, you find you get this, the twang that everyone calls it, or this kind of, it's not an off taste, but it's a taste that's there. I think it's something that's used in the, the preservatives of the, the malt extract in the tins, that you can get this kind of undertone of flavour that you can almost determine that it's a kit beer. A lot of the hoppy beers seem to get away with that because it kind of you know hides that taste in it. That said, I have had some kits of recent that have been just as good without the kind of the, the too much of the extra hops added to it, and they're still tasting pretty damn good. But this kit is quite what I would call basic. You just get two of these very big tins of malt extract, your instructions, and a, a single packet of yeast don't think it says on this, it just says premium made, doesn't say which type or if you know, I'm guessing it's probably just kind of a, an English ale yeast. Um, it says a strong mellow ale balanced with choice aromatic and bittering hops. Uh, it gives you a little picture of what it should look like. Uh, it is 3.6 kilo and approximate ABV is 5.7%. Really simple instructions, it's just a simple case of warming your tins up in some warm water. Warm or hot, I tend to kind of just use warm from the tap first of all to soften it up, then you rinse your tins out with some boiling water. All goes into a clean sterilized bucket, topped up to the required amount of water on the instructions, making sure that it's at the right temperature for the yeast, pitch your yeast, leave to ferment. I tend to leave my beer kits now for, you know, at least, they say, I think it's like two weeks or until it's fermented out. I tend to leave, I left the kutch for about three weeks purely because I, I found that it gives it time to kind of, you know, ferment out properly. It just, it just seems to work better for me. I don't seem to get as much, you know, over carbonation issues and whatnot. Obviously, if you've got a fermentation fridge, you're controlling temperatures, you're, you're sorted. But in my case, in the flat this time of year, I'm just fermenting with the natural temperature that it is. It tends to be about 20 to 21 in here. And, you know, it's quite stable in the cupboard just under the, uh, well, not under the stairs, but under there. Anyway. Um, too much waffling. Um, that's pretty much it. It is a kind of uh, what I would call a basic kit. Um, there's not really much additions to add. You don't need to add any extra spray more. Um, you only need your priming sugar for your bottles afterwards. What I'm going to do though, I say bottles. You might remember I did the Six Nations kit from Muntins. Um, and I had this little bladder bag thing with a little tap on it. I'm going to put uh, some of the kit on that. I can't remember if that whole held 20 litres. I know that was a lot smaller kit. I'm going to put um, at least half the kit in that and dispense some of that maybe kind of just thinking what is it going to be it's probably going to be on the cusp of new year i might i might break my rule and wing it on the two weeks and see how we go so i'm probably not going to get much footage of me kind of adding the, the malt extract to the bucket because you've all seen that before in other videos but i'm really going to cut back to the to the taste test and give it a you know a thorough review of you know how this stands against some of the other other kits but i'm quite looking forward to it so I don't, I don't tend to do many of the, the Christmas kits, so uh, it's a first for me. I think it's probably, yeah, it's probably the first Christmas kit I've ever got, so. Right, it's finally time to wrap up the Munson's Winter Warmer beer review. It's been far too long. Lots has gone on. Um, we are in February now, sort of like second week of February. So I appreciate that this beer kit's probably not even available in the shops now. For that, I can only apologize, but stuff has got in the way. I think it's over carbon, it's quite lively in the bottle. But... Now there isn't much of this left, I have to admit. It's just I haven't got round to uh, filming the actual review. 
is a little bit lively possibly. I'm not going to put too much in there because otherwise the head's just going to go massive on it. One thing I did find with this, and I don't know, it certainly um, fermented out correctly and everything, but it, it seems to hold a bit of a residual sweetness. And I can't, for the life of me, find the instructions or the box to remember the exact ABV that it was meant to be. I think it was meant to be around a 5.6 or something, hence a winter warmer, a bit more of a heavier beer. It's kind of a, a real dark, coppery colour. It's quite true to, to colour on the camera for a change, but but there is quite an, um, an overriding sweetness. Not a, not a bad sweetness, but there's there's a, a lingering sweetness there. I would say it's dissipated as time's gone on, but what I will say, which did surprise me a lot for this kit, was um, Munton's, the, the beer kit range, goes from kind of like, I don't know, what I consider the really basic kit to kind of, for me now, the, um, the Kutch kit, um, the Tiny Rebel one, which is just the gold standard, I think. But there's also the premium range that they do in other kits, and I think this is kind of part of the premium range. But strangely enough, when I did get the kit, it was kind of what I consider to be the basic kit. Um, I started off brewing years ago with the Woodford's Wherry, which I would still consider it a basic kit, but it makes a damn good beer. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do to it to make it slightly better than you know it comes out of the box. But for this, I just did it by the by the instruction, and it was just a simple two can malt extract kit um, with a, a basic packet of yeast. I'm not even sure what type of yeast. I guess it's just like an English ale, possibly. Um, but I didn't hold out much hope, if I'm honest, because most of them tend to be a little bit, I don't know, substandard. You get this the, the kit twain that everyone knows about. It just doesn't taste right. There's a there's an off taste, and I have to say I'm very surprised that it's not in this. There is that that kind of sweetness I get. But I don't attribute that to the kind of the kit twang that I've had in the past. Um, it's very strange. I don't know that maybe the science moved on and they're working away of kind of getting rid of that twang, but it, it doesn't exist. Obviously, it's by far no doubt that the, the Kutch kit masks it with the amount of hops that it comes to the kit, and that's that's no that's no secret. Everyone home brewer wise knows that that's how you get rid of that twang. You know, you can't detect it in the real hoppy kits. And some of the other premium kits out there that contain a lot of hops, you, you don't get that twang. But you don't get a whole heap of, well, I don't get the twang at all. I get this, this sweetness. Maybe some would taste that sweetness and go, oh, that's the kit twang. But it, for me, it's not. That, that kit twang, I would guarantee that if, you know, well, I'd like to think if you lined a series of beer up and there was, you know, the, the cheaper kits and that that were in there, you'd be able to identify that because of that, that kind of that weird taste, I don't know, it's very hard to explain that taste, but most people that have you know, brewed a kit before without adding additions will be able to detect it. So that aside, I definitely think as a winter warmer beer, this has got a, a heavier note to it. It's definitely a kind of a feel that it's kind of a bit more heavy bodied, a bit more kind of like a winter warmer I guess, but I wouldn't say I get a whole heap of I don't know, for me, like a, like Christmas beers, I've, I've got a whole heap of beer reviews to go up that I did at Christmas and sort of just after that hasn't gone up on, on film yet. Um, and they claim to be like Christmas beers, they've got all this, you know, festive spice and notes and things like that. And they're really kind of underwhelming. Um, there's not a whole heap of that in here. I don't know what it is. There's not, I don't think it pertains to have kind of spice and winter warmery and stuff and all that, but it's kind of, it's a, it is called winter warm, but I don't think it pertains to kind of have all that note in it, but I don't know, I mean I suppose it does kind of invoke winter as such and Christmas because it's kind of a darker beer. You kind of have more of those darker beers I feel when it's when it's cold, it's really miserable now, it's probably the coldest it's been prior to Christmas now, at like kind of February time it's really cold here. We had a little bit of snow the other day, so it's kind of probably the right time to be drinking this even though Christmas has gone. And what I did do with this, and it's kind of all gone, was I reused the um, the little bladder bag that you've probably seen me use in the Six Nations Muntins kit, which works absolutely fantastic. It's such a joy. I mean, I, for me, I hope, and I, I hope Muntins are listening, that they've produced that kit with that in it, but maybe they could produce just that bladder bag and that little tub that you get that you can use as a fermenter on its own um, as a separate sort of purchase, because that's a fantastic little kit, because you can just have that kind of bag that you put your beer in, after you've kind of racked it off, it holds, I think it was about 
10 litres, 12 litres, I can't quite sh be sure. A small amount of sugar, priming sugar, turn it on its side, I kind of, you can have it upright, but I was kind of I'm very distrusting of things and that initially. Let it swell up and then you're just pouring off natural carbonation. Obviously you've got to drink it quite, you know, reasonably fast, which isn't a problem with it, beer tastes fantastic. And then you've got, you know, an easy dispense on the side of your kitchen and that. It, it works fantastic and the bag feels quite durable, I've got to admit, it's, that's probably only the second time I've used it since I did the Six Nations kit. But I feel like it, you could probably get another, I don't know, an infinite amount of uses as long as you treat it right. I mean, I'm guessing there's going to be a, a certain life to it, but it feels really quite sturdy. So, so I think for Munners, I hope that that, you know, as you can probably get uh, the Six Nations is done, but that should be an actual kit that you can always get and replace the bags. It'd be fantastic. So as a beer, this, I think the Winter Warmer kit, fantastic. I know there was another Winter retype Christmas kit around the same time, which is Tinsel Toes, I believe, that um, Munners do. Um, and I couldn't quite work. I did kind of look, I know this was like either Winter Warm was already out there because I think there was a Santa's Winter Warm and I couldn't be sure if this was the, the newer version of that or this is a new beer kit but I've got to admit it's a, it's a bit of a bit of a strange one to be so good for such a, a two can kit it's, it's took me by surprise so whether they've kind of developed something in the in the lab or whatever how to work out to make it that little bit better but I think kits are coming a long way you know since I brewed you know it's, I don't know it's probably like four or five years ago now Maybe more, I don't know, I lose track of time. But yeah, they're definitely improving, you know, and I can't wait to see what Munton's gonna bring out next. So this has been the winter warmer. You know, it's probably the best two can kind of, what I'd consider basic. It's probably part of their premium range, so I'm probably doing them a disservice by saying that. But in terms of what you get, in terms of how simple it is, it's just like a kit, you know, the two cans and the yeast. Whereas, you know, you've got the, the kutch and things like that. I've got a little bit more sort of labour intensive things, which, you know, I say labour intensive, it's only a simple case of adding extra bags of hops and things like that. But if you really wanted to keep it simple without the, the stress and the worry, and still produce a fantastic beer. And the thing is, it tastes good in the bottle, but there's something about when it's in that, that polypin as well, and it's kind of, you know, it's that um, sort of almost cast condition. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. So this has been an absolute joy. I can only apologise to Munnons for the review that it's just so late and, now obviously you can probably still buy a winter warmer and it's it's cold enough to produce it and you know and make some so you know why not get out and get a winter warmer because this is absolutely fantastic for a for a two can you can't go wrong and at the price that it is amazing